Hi, this is the podcast of The Open Minded. My name is Roberto. I'm Alejandro. And today we're going to be talking about mental health. So as many of you may, may know, mental health has been a growing issue in America. It has been stated that mental, mental disorders stem from many different problems like uh, early, child, early traumatic experiences in one's childhood, opioid addiction, other drug-related addictions, and also bullying. Have you had any experience uh, with mental health? Um, personally, uh, growing up, I've dealt with like angry issues. I don't really know where it stems from, but um, yeah, like I've dealt with them, and like personally, like, I think one of the main issues is that like a lot of people are not willing to treat it uh, because because of um, because of like just the stigma, the stigma of it. Um, the back, the bad stigma the, that it has. It's a, the negative stigma that uh, one who has mental health issues is considered crazy, and mm-hmm. it's not. It's not. Well, the problem is that the brain. It's 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 so complex, and mm-hmm. sometimes many. Well, many people don't don't understand that there's different regions of your brain that's in charge of different uh, bodily functions uh, such as reading, hearing and we don't understand that if there's a if there's a if you have a mental disorder it's more derived from a certain region of your brain not functioning well it's not really that oh like this person has gone crazy it's not it's it's not like that and that's that's what a uh, society has made it seem like that if if you have a if you have a mental issue it's you're crazy but you just it just you, you just need a psychiatric help and mm. most likely um, psychological therapy exactly at least for me um, going to a psychologist or a therapist I'm not sure what you call them it helped me out a lot because back then I used to just explode for any little thing just any little thing like let's say if um, if you got me mad just because you called me dumb or a curse word or anything I would just blow up and um, just go out of my way and just to hurt you because at least to me that was the way that I dealt with anger in school or in the house pretty much anywhere that's how I dealt with, and at least um, going to a therapist or psych- psychologist, um, she helped me talk about my feelings, talk about them, because I think that was probably one of the problems that um, that our parents didn't well, as, know how to deal with, well, I as, think, in a way. As, as, as a male, you're also, uh, you experience that... Uh, there's that obstacle you you have in front of you that mm-hmm. if there's really an issue with you, such as mental or, or something going on in school or s- something else going on in your life, they wouldn't really take it in consideration just mm-hmm. because you're a male. And as a male, um, society thinks you, it's just something you're supposed to deal with and they shouldn't affect you mm-hmm. because you're labeled uh, a macho man or mm-hmm. yeah and then um, I think especially because especially because um, since I'm the oldest one I have to I have to help you guys I felt like I always had to help you guys and um, I had to deal with my own things on my own because yeah I am the oldest um I have that, like, I don't know, I have to be held up to a certain standard, I think, back then. Um, where, like, yeah, like, just growing up in that, like, sort of machismo era where, like, men can't talk about it because they're weaker. But in reality, like, just holding it back, like, it just, it'll tend to grow on you and get worse as it goes with it because you don't deal with. Well, it's 
well, it's obvious you need a, when you have a mental issue, it needs to be, it needs to be treated. That's a, a problem. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you, the, that uh, mass shooting that happened in, in Sandy Hook, that, uh, that kid called Adam, Adam Lozano, it was, it was said in a, in an article by New York Times that uh, a, a doctor said that he had uh, mental issues that weren't treated. Mm-hmm. And the problem of his mental disorder not being treated, that later in life caused them to grab a, uh, a rifle and commit a mass shooting in school. So, Well, like, yeah, like, at least... I'm not sure, like, I'm not, I don't know about the story, but let's say it could be, um, he wasn't able to express himself. So, like, let's say, um, his, yeah, like, chemical imbalance or whatever it is, or they never showed him how to express himself. Or because of the chemical imbalance, like, he wasn't able to express himself in a way to, like, deal with it or talk to people. Well, it was, uh, he was diagnosed with OCD, so. Which is? Ob- obsessive compulsive disorder. Okay. And which the, basically the, the person has, uh, he has a problem with like perfection and order, having everything in order. That was uh, a problem people, many students that, that knew him or were close to him. Knew him. They they said that uh, he had a he had a, a problem like he would get out of control when something wasn't in order or something wasn't perfect mm-hmm. in his standards. That's probably like what his parents. It might have been like taught to him more like yeah like everything had to be perfect and all stuff like. Um, I'm not saying that all of them, but like some like military families tend to be like very organized and stuff because like at least when like the father or the mo- or the mother um, being in a in an organized group always worked better and they knew how to work like that. So probably it was taught to him and it just developed into a problem that he had. I'm not sure if uh, like he it might have stemmed from that or sh- well he wasn't uh, he wasn't from a military his, his family didn't have a military background I'm not saying that all of them are like that but no I'm just I'm, mm-hmm. I'm just saying they didn't it wasn't like that with them it's just mm-hmm. it could just be it was just derived from that mm-hmm. from the from mm-hmm. os- from having o- OCD and yeah, there's there's many times when um, psychological disorders become um, get to a bigger extreme because it's not treated for the for the concern that oh like what if uh, what if this person thinks I'm crazy? They just that it's just that that negative label on 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 mental health that prevents people from getting treatment. Mm-hmm. And it could have been this case in in with him that uh, maybe his parents his parents probably noticed it, but they they didn't take him to a psychologist or uh, or um, to a psychiatrist in order to get help. So, getting mental treatment, um, getting medication in order to control. Mm-hmm. In order to control the OCD and anxiety that he was experiencing, mm-hmm. because also the problem is that as a young child, you you really don't know what's going on in you you really don't know what's going on with your body. It's no, of course. You basically like it's it's like when a child is going through puberty, you don't you don't understand what's going on. You don't you don't get why you feel a different way. Um, you don't get why you 
growing facial hair. You don't know why you get a uh, sudden mood swings. And um, yeah. something, yeah. something that something's something new that you're experiencing. And of course, if like you're not used to it, and if nobody really talks to you about this, then you're never gonna learn. Yeah. And like, yeah, like um, at least some people, like, yeah, they don't see a mental issue as they're they're um, crazy instead of mm-hmm. oh, they just need a little bit of help. I think my, at least for me, like my problem was I wasn't I wasn't able to express myself or talk about my feelings, and until I was able to talk about it, like I was able to be more happy because at least to me growing up i've always felt like if i never really fit into any like place or group so for me um i think once i realized that i realized that like like if i'm able to talk about stuff i'm like it just makes it better and that's what like a lot of people tend to um, tend to do. They'll just they'll just keep it in the back of their heads and not talk to anybody about it because yeah, it'll make them crazy or it'll make them weak because they're showing their feelings. But since since you're saying that uh, you had a problem fitting into a group, that could have also been that you you were really shy as 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 a as, as a kid because I mean if, if you didn't fit in any group that means you no, probably like didn't I felt, communicate like, well, I like fit, how was your communication like yeah like I was growing up I was always pretty shy I still am but um not to the extent that I was before because like yeah like at least to me it was as a kid growing up it was to me it felt like a mission just trying to Let's say when we go to McDonald's, ordering a meal, talking to that person that I don't know, felt extremely hard. Like my, I started sweating, my heart was racing just to tell that person that I want a McChicken or I want chicken nuggets or can I get a refill? Yeah. To me, that was very hard. Like just doing that and um, to me, like, like at least it, still in high school I was dealing with that like basically my my friends would tell me I'm like hey um, why don't you hang out with us because I preferred eating alone well it could have been also that you had a issue uh, forming a secure attachment um, it's like what some children have uh, problems with uh, basically they they, had, they have problems like forming a friendship, forming a relationship. Basically, well, like also like just just fitting into a different group of mm-hmm. of people, like the the jocks or um, the rockers, the skaters. You just you just like this. Um, you just like the ability to form an attachment with people. Which mm-hmm. could also stem from early childhood, like parenting, how your parents were with you. It's yeah. So, but um, from what it seems like, it's uh, your your issue was uh, communication skills. It could have been that at the moment you lacked the uh, communication skills and you didn't really know how to. Um, you didn't really know how to initiate a conversation with different groups of people mm-hmm. in order to form to form a attachment, form a relationship. And that could have been that could have been what was backing you up from forming a, a relationship to those mm-hmm. people. And then I yeah, like at least like to like at least for me, like I um I dealt with this on my own. I think the way that I um, I dealt with it much better was when I started to work when I started working at McDonald's 
back then when I used to work at McDonald's. When I started working there, like, I wouldn't talk to anyone. I wouldn't talk to anyone, but and then they would have to, they put me to the front cashier and like, of course, I had to. I had to talk to people. I'm like, how are they gonna get their order? So, like, it gave me, like, I practice a lot. I practice a lot, like, just taking orders, meeting new people, and that's, that, like, developed my communication skills, and I was able to actually talk to people and be okay just talking to somebody I don't know at all. And... Yeah, it, for me, that helped me a lot. And I, I see, I somewhat see the same problems with um, our little brother, our baby brother. And um, that's why I would try to, like, push him to order things because he gets nervous. So, but wouldn't you say that, uh, that uh, issue you had with communication, wouldn't you say that then late led you to conforming conforming to the way you were because it was until you got that job as a cashier at McDonald's that helped you break that barrier where you had to get out of your, your comfort zone and begin to do something you weren't used to doing something mm -hmm. something that wasn't common in, in, in your lifestyle mm -hmm. so yeah, I, well, yeah, I, when I started working there, like, I started going to the gym, too, because, of course, my brother started um, pushing me to go. Um, yeah, like, um, I started going to the gym. I, like, at first, yeah, I felt uncomfortable because I was in, I was in a place that I wasn't used to, and, like, being there, um, with complete strangers was hard for me. It was just like, it was nerve wracking. Um, and eventually I got used to it and then I started doing more things that were out of my comfort zone. I started like, I started going to places, meeting new people, like friends or coworkers introducing me to their, to their friends and stuff and um yeah um like if you see like now i'm able to go to places like the renaissance fair i'm able to do it on my own or go to the fair or random places like yesterday we went to disney um it was really fun like my brother enjoyed it so much and yeah, like, that helped me a lot. And at least if there's a stranger that tries talking to me, I wouldn't ignore them now, nine days. Like, let's say if I'm waiting in line. I'm waiting in line, and there's this person that just comes up to me and is like, oh, I'm like, um, today's a nice day, or um, have you ever been in this ride, or something. I'm like, I'm able to communicate with them and continue a conversation because I sort of broke through that barrier I'm still not there all the way so uh, going back to uh, mental health I found this statistic by the National Institute of Mental Health where it, it stated that nearly one in five adults live with a mental illness and in 2017, that was approximately 46.6 million. And I see, I, I commonly see it, um, especially us living in Pomona. Um, you see a bunch of people walking around, possibly experiencing a, um, mental, mental disorders caused mm -hmm. by drug drug addictions drug ad addictions like uh, I've seen a couple of people just walking around with uh, with uh, 
jitterness, uh, random, random body movements. It's they can't uh, they can't remain calm and mm -hmm. just walk walk towards their destination. Mm -hmm. It's just like I don't know where like just you just see them just jittery. Yeah, like let's say, let's say basically, like, I think like experiencing the withdrawal syndrome uh, symptoms or from drugs or yeah, it's just them not e being able to cope with life or stuff mm -hmm. like that. Like yeah, like I know like in the, like well, people who are depressed or depression, like they feel so alone, they feel sad, they feel like even though if you tell them that. Um, that you love them they're still not gonna they're still not gonna feel it like you could tell them all these things but they're not they don't feel it uh, like for themselves and yeah like those people tend to feel alone and or other issues that they have and they they will tend to deal with their depression or other mental mental issues, schizophrenia or whatever it is, okay. with dr drugs, because it makes them feel good. Because on their own they don't, they don't, and um, it's the I wouldn't say is the cheapest way to deal with it, but well, like it's it, probably the most the more access accessible. A for problem, them. a problem with the. Uh, Drug addiction, it's a, like, um, I use this example where um, it's basically a problem that to say is that when you're going through withdra withdrawal, you have a big issue because your receptors, so there's a lot of uh, dopamine receptors when you consume, for example, a lot of cocaine or any other drugs, you basically have a giant increase of, of a dopamine going through your neurons so mm -hmm. your 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 uh, neurons begin to um, create more more uh, receptors mm -hmm. so there could be more dopamine because there's an excess of dopamine so it needs to there needs to be a way in order for there, all that dopamine mm -hmm. to just keep on going continue entering your body yeah so it's basically and like ba and basically an, an example I use is that like when you're when you're consuming a lot of drugs, your body's building a lot of houses. So um, your body basically, when you're consuming c cocaine, there's a lot of people entering. So you need to build more houses in order to house those people. And when you're going through withdraw withdrawal, your body slowly begins to basically tear down and break down all those uh, receptors or houses and that's why it takes so long and that's why you feel those effects so and like also um, another issue would be um, going through stress a way people ex um, stress and depression it's very common especially in a in a low socioeconomic status where people had to they work through a week by week check and you have a big deduction of, of taxes then you also have to pay for um, health care which in many cases families don't have because it's too expensive it's in a, it's in many cases it's it's not affordable mm -hmm. and you also have to pay utilities uh, gas bill electric bill water bill and then transportation, your gas and your car insurance, it's its a lot. And then, well, for your kids, if you have kids for their education, their school supplies, sometimes your kids need a, I mean, your kids need a, need a computer and it's... Just their stress level keeps on going yeah. up and up. And, and, um... As the things add up. Like, I've, I've heard from many psychologists that like getting angry, um, all that stress, it's uh, caused by you. It's not uh, caused by the person. So if I tell you something, if I tell you, 
oh, um, your, your uh, benching game has gone down and you get angry. You're getting angry because it's something you're causing on your own. It's, mm-hmm. it's something you continuously think about. And since you're continuously thinking about it, it's in your head. And it just stays there, and you're just dwelling on that, on that, uh, on that comment. I, I, um, I told you. It's uh, so like yeah, that's what um, and the problem w- with uh, stress is that stress it, it causes many problems. Stress it um, uh, it uh, damages your neurons, and it uh, weakens your immune system, and. Nowadays, it's uh, there's been many studies that have uh, showed uh, your immune system is one of the most important things. One of the most important systems, no, yeah, your immune your immune system, your immune system is one of the most important uh, systems in order to have a healthy lifestyle. Well, yeah, of course. If you're not healthy, if you're not healthy physically, then mentally you feel like you feel bad you don't feel great because like physically you're not feeling good so mentally of course it's gonna affect you too in a way and well i've uh i recently um there was a friend who uh, well i've seen many people and who've uh, experienced uh, stress and depression and They've uh, been transported to the to the ER because many of them have told me that they didn't feel a motivation in life uh, just like out of nowhere. They didn't mm-hmm. feel motivation. They didn't. Um, they they didn't know what their what their role was in life. Um, like I had a little issue recently. Um, not long ago, because of school, like I, I, I was going th- through a little stress because uh, I had, I didn't since I was very busy with school. I didn't have the time to socialize, uh, just do things outside of the realm of, uh, of the realm of going to school, mm-hmm. studying, because I would. Uh, go I would my schedule would be from 9 a.m. like up to like 6 Mm -hmm. 6 p.m. so right when I would get back home I would go directly to eat and just study study the rest of the time and yeah I was I would just begin to cry when I would think about that Mm -hmm. and the way I got over it was I began to tell myself like what are you doing why do you why are you being so egocentric and not taking into consideration that there's other students who have a full time have a full time schedule in school mm-hmm. and some of them even have a full time job and they have a family or there's other people that have a full time schedule part time and they take care of their family or they have a full time full time schedule part time and they just do other things in at home, uh, like mm-hmm. cleaning, getting groceries, etc., and yeah, I began to think about other people, like uh, one of our one of our aunts in Mexico. She she's uh, the president of a uh, of an uh, organization in her town, mm-hmm. where it's basically in charge of the social services. It's called the uh, DIF. So she's in charge of the social services, and she is the president of that organization. And she's also going to school. She's getting her master's degree. So yeah, that's what I I began to tell myself. Yeah, why are you being so ego- why why are you being so egocentric? Like it seems like you you don't you don't want the career you mm-hmm. you're studying for. And yeah, after that, just. It just went away. Mm-hmm. That's that's how how I dealt with that uh, stressful moment, and the way I see it is, uh, any single time there's a there's a stressor that's uh, I'm confronting, I just approach it with positivity and I try to resolve it. 
that's another issue uh, psychologists talk about that uh, many people don't confront that that uh, stressor they don't resolve it and when you don't resolve it when you don't confront it it's just in your mind you're just mm -hmm. you're just rethinking it you're you're basically if you're rethinking it you're consolidating it into your head so once you're consolidating it it's, it's going to be in your head for a long time and if you don't resolve it you just it's just it's it's going to be there as something you couldn't you couldn't confront something that backed you off basically so and that's what i've i've seen like depression it's a it's also a big issue mm -hmm. and yeah it's it's causing people to um fall into the er or begin to develop some mental disorders yeah because they well yeah school is extremely stressful because you are working towards a goal but it seems like a never-ending thing yeah like this task i'm like oh man i was i don't know six hours in school whatever whatever hours you go to school it was like i'm like this many hours in school and i come back and i'm still dealing with the same thing when i just want to relax but then uh, you should see it as i'm working towards something not yeah. i'm like i'm doing this non-stop I'm like I'm working towards it later on I'm gonna be much happier right now of course if I feel a little miserable or I don't feel that great because I can't do what I want but in the long run I'm like it, it's it's gonna come like you're what well, you're working for your goal you're gonna achieve it if you continue working how you're working like, like if you see like yeah like one of our brothers um he um yeah he was in school he like, yeah, he was in school he was in the accelerated classes and all stuff um he was in sports well he was in school full-time he's a full-time student he was in accelerated classes and then he was in sports he was wrestling he was still in the fraternity and having a part-time job with a girlfriend too he was dealing with all that and yeah like if you see him now he's gone to europe germany i know germany is in europe but like he's been to other places i think um he went to he went to Peru, too. I'm not sure if it's that place, but he's been he's been around the world. Um, he's explored way more places, and if you see all that work that he went through, or all the stress that he dealt with throughout that period, it was worth it. Um, um, I mean that's another that's another problem about uh about our college is that um since th there's that problem with uh, a lack of uh, a lack of funds um s students at the same time they just they s stress so much and it's just it's because they're supposed to focus on maintaining a, a good uh, grade point average uh, working taking out loans, paying out loans, buying textbooks, which is a pretty expensive in many cases. And it's just thinking about how they, how they, they're experiencing all that stress. It's, it's a uh, pretty unfortunate. And the problem is that it's in most cases, it's, it's not, issue with money there's a problem with uh with money that causes mm -hmm. them to go through all that stress but then there there is always like work around things yeah. like man yeah like at least just keeping your head that uh, like there's basically there's basically a light at the end of the tunnel 
I was like, yeah, it's going to be hard. Like, you're going to go through this or that. But, hey, you, um, you'll eventually get there. It'll take time. But it will. You'll get there. For sure. And, yeah. So it's, uh... But I think in just in, I think it's more common in, f like for example, the the issue of that n negative stigma on, on 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 mental health. It's more. It's more. I think it's what's I think is very common in the Mexican Mexican culture and in uh, Mexico. It's, it's common everywhere. Yeah. Like if you see, um, like in Asian cultures. Um, there's that, um, there's that, like, thing that, like, there's, uh, the tiger parent. They tend to, they'll, um, they, they'll hold up their kids to a certain standard. And if they don't, um, if they don't achieve that, then they don't feel great. Because their parents were always telling them, like, you know, you should become a doctor, you should become this, a lawyer, or blah, blah, blah. But if they, if that certain kid doesn't achieve that, like, they've been, they've been, like, told their whole life that they should be this thing or this person. Mm -hmm. And if they don't achieve it, then that's when they deal with, like, mental issues, too. It's not only the Mexican culture. No, well, I'm not saying it's a uh, Mexican culture. It's just there's um, it seems to be it's a uh, very common in uh, with uh, cultures that uh, races where people are very tradition oriented. They basically their culture, it's uh, a big priority to them, and that's one thing they use in order. To carry a a good lifestyle, according to them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's uh, and also there's a problem with uh, with veterans, veterans coming back from from war, um, seeing their their closest friends being blown into pieces or mm -hmm. or. Uh, shot to death it's uh it's very traumatic to them and it's another problem that like in many cases they're just abandoned they're just left in the street and they're not receiving mental health it's um i don't know if you you've heard about that movie i think it's called um american american um, um soldier where no, I forgot what's it called, but uh, well, it's pretty much the same thing with um. I think it Forrest was Forrest Gump. I think it was with uh, Bradley Cooper. It's pretty much the same thing with like Forrest Gump. I don't know if you remember Commander Dan, or whatever his name is. Like he got his leg blown up and he was living in the street for the longest time because like yeah, I'm pretty sure he wasn't able to like deal with it. Oh, it's uh. American Sniper. Yeah, yeah, it's a American Sniper where he he would he would after he came back from war, like he also experienced some um, PTSD, but uh, he would he would go back to uh, like a veterans clinic where they had uh, veterans um, receiving a treatment and one of the veterans ended up uh, I don't know if he well he, he killed him but I don't know if he ran him over or if he shot him but mm -hmm. yeah he ended up he ended up um, killing him and that's that's another issue that like when you're talking about homeless people it's just there could be it could be that many of them are just are veterans and they're experiencing that post-traumatic stress disorder and it just it needs to be an issue that needs to be tackled down because 
all these mass shootings happening, there's a big connection with uh, mental disorders, opioids, like the the guy who uh, killed uh, all those people in Mandalay Bay. Um, it was it was stated that he didn't have any. Once he got a brain scan, there wasn't any issues. There wasn't any holes in his brain, so it didn't seem like he had a uh, mental disorders. But um, it was also stated that he seemed like he, he had an opioid addiction. Mm-hmm. He, I think, um, he they they found a bunch of pills. I think in his hotel room. So yeah, it's. Uh, probably like at an earlier age he was introduced into like I don't know the world of drugs and stuff so the world of drugs drugs or he was just uh, battling uh, his own his own psyche mm-hmm. um, where basically like it's what that's what also it's it's pretty unfortunate how they keep on prescribing all these opioids and you make these people dependent on, on the opioids when in many cases they don't need it and mm-hmm. you just keep on piling up and piling up mm-hmm. their dependency on these drugs and that later leads them to um, committing a felony, a felony or, or just developing this mental disorder mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah it's a uh, it's, it's an issue. Yeah. And, I mean, you see it in the in the streets. Um, this one time I was in I was in L.A. And I saw, I saw this guy. He was just, he was just speaking to himself. Um, it seems like whatever he was thinking in his mind, he was projecting it. So, mm-hmm. sort of like basically how, uh, like it's seen in, 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 in children when they use private speech. They're basically talking to themselves, but in many cases, it just like blurts out. It comes out. So yeah, and he was just he was just uh, talking to himself, and he was just bringing up uh, different ideas, and he was just talking about random things. And like I walked past them, and it seemed like he didn't. It seemed like he didn't see me. Like it's yeah. Well, he's in his own world. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's sad to admit, but yeah, like just not able to cope with it. Yeah, like um, I mean, my way with uh, experience. I mean, coping with stress. I just yeah. I just I try to resolve it. I confront it. I resolve it and. I just remain positive Mm -hmm. because yeah there's many people that just dwell on on the stress and it just Mm -hmm. like if you just continuously dwell on it it's it's gonna stay there it's gonna be there for for a long time until you resolve it so alright so um, this is the end of the of the fourth episode of the podcast of Open Minded um yeah we talked about this issue about mental health and we hope you enjoyed the episode and until next time thank you and bye bye